At the beginning of human history, four main killers dominated the world. Trauma, infections, starvation, and childbirth. These were the four horsemen, the four great killers that haunted humanity for the majority of our existence. And for thousands of years, our options for dealing with these four killers were primitive. We could splint broken bones. We could use some plants for medicine. We avoided dangerous animals and conflicts with other groups. And we relied on midwives during childbirth. But that was about it. This was humanity's first medical paradigm. But gradually, then suddenly, everything changed. We industrialized. We built cities. We developed modern agriculture. We created modern medicine with the germ theory, vaccines, antibiotics. And these breakthroughs launched us into a new era, the second medical paradigm. And that's where we are today. We've pretty much conquered the ancient killers. Trauma, infection, starvation, and childbirth are no longer the biggest threats to our lives. Instead, we now face four new big killers. Cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative disease, cancer, and diabetes. Modern medicine can manage these conditions, but it can't cure them. Why? Because modern medicine only treats the symptoms of these conditions. We're not addressing the root cause. And what's the root cause of these diseases? It's the aging cell. So why do we age? Surprisingly, science didn't have a good answer for why we age until very recently. It wasn't until 2013 that researchers identified a framework for understanding aging. And we now refer to this framework as the nine hallmarks of aging. These hallmarks explain pretty much every age-related illness, including the four modern killers, heart disease, dementia, cancer, and diabetes. And here they are, the nine hallmarks of aging. Genomic instability telomere attrition, epigenetic alterations, loss of proteostasis, deregulated nutrient sensing, mitochondrial dysfunction, cellular senescence, stem cell exhaustion, and altered intercellular communication. Each of these represents a different type of cellular damage or dysfunction that drives aging. Over time, the damage builds up, causing our bodies to gradually break down, resulting in what we perceive as aging. The fact that we are beginning to understand why we age is groundbreaking. Just codifying the aging process like this is a discovery that could not only redefine human health, it could redefine what it means to be human. Because this means that we might finally have a say in how we age. We live in very exciting times because we are on the verge of something completely new. The third medical paradigm. Instead of just managing the symptoms of old age, like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and dementia, we're beginning to understand how we might actually slow down, stop, or even reverse the aging process, which would allow us to avoid age-related illnesses altogether. It's like an immunization against illnesses that come with age by avoiding getting old in the first place. The better we understand the cell, the more we can influence it. And the more we can influence it, the more control we gain over our own biology. If we can learn to treat the cellular damage that drives aging, the future of humanity could look radically different. Entering this next medical paradigm, the third medical paradigm, marks the beginning of a whole new era in modern medicine, the age of biological control. Within our lifetimes, we're likely to see some significant age reversal technologies. And this means that if you are biologically healthy and you're in your 40s or 50s or maybe even 60s, you might never see an age-related illness. This is the next paradigm of modern medicine.
Leading longevity researcher Aubrey de Grey believes that by 2036, we should reach longevity escape velocity, the point where medical advances outpace the aging process, helping us gain more years than we lose to aging. The goal of rejuvenation therapies isn't necessarily to make us live forever. The goal is to prevent age-related illnesses, because old age is the single greatest predictive factor of illnesses like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and dementia. And the reason for this is that the root cause is the aging cell. So what's on the horizon? There are several promising age reversal therapies already in human trial. Senolytics. Senolytics are drugs that clear out senescent cells. Senescent cells, often called zombie cells, are dead cells that the immune system hasn't cleared. They hang around, releasing harmful substances that drive aging and inflammation. Removing these cells can help restore tissue health and reduce age-related decline. Telomere lengthening. Telomeres are protective caps on the ends of chromosomes that determine a cell's lifespan. With each cell division, telomeres shorten. When the telomeres become too short, the cell is programmed to undergo apoptosis, activating a program to commit suicide. Since telomeres only allow for about 50 cell divisions, known as the Hayflick limit, extending them could allow cells to remain healthy and functional for longer. Gene therapy. With advanced technologies like CRISPR, we're developing treatments that can repair or adjust genes linked to aging. This could mean correcting genetic damage that drives the aging process and restoring youthful cell function. The science of aging is advancing rapidly, and for the first time in human history, we might actually have a say in how long and how well we live. So what does this mean for you? Well, it means that if you try to stay healthy and stick around for the next two decades, and if you avoid habits that age you prematurely, if you essentially just take good care of yourself and don't die, then you might never see an age-related illness. Because if progress continues like it is now, we are likely to see groundbreaking age reversal technologies within our lifetimes. Human beings are a species of explorers and engineers, and it's about time we explore and conquer the field of biology. Until next time, stay safe and stack sats. Peace out. Get your copy of Yoni's book, Abundance Through Scarcity, in the description below.